Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Bushwhackers. And we have a second episode out with Lee Loves TV. So sit back and enjoy, and please like, comment, subscribe. Help the channel grow. Lee, Luca, and JJ are walking through the electronics aisle, lazily looking at the TVs on sale. As they walk by, Lee sees something and hurries over and stares at it. There it is. The Xenos curved screen. With voice-activated remote control and a built-in cable box that can access channels from all over the world. What exactly do you watch from all over the world? You only ever watch ESPN and FX. And what about Nat Geo? No, that's Luca. Nah, that's gotten too fishing-oriented. I just watch the Travel Channel now. Well, whatever. This is the TV, boys. How does it help our business? What do you mean? I'm buying it for myself. Damn. Don't worry, JJ. I don't think he even gives two shits about the Bushwhackers. Yeah, why exactly I recalled that? It sounds like some sex group. I don't know, Luca came up with that name. Well, I thought it sounded cool. Bushwhackers. Doesn't it sound exotic? It sounds dumb. Fine, but we're not calling ourselves the Quark Brothers. Well, why not? I actually like that one. Me too. Well, Sid, why, but the people at Disney have, have an issue with that. Okay, before we get off tangent again, can we get back to the TV and move it into my apartment? I don't know, man. There are a lot of witnesses. I am paying for it, dipshit. Oh, well, <laughs> that changes things. Sure. At Lee's apartment, we see the door open and the bushwhackers carefully try to get the TV in. Okay, you got it? Yeah. JJ? Yeah. Okay, bring it towards me. No, no, no! This way, asshole! It's like the moment he gets a new TV, he becomes this huge dick and lobs insults around like they're candy. That made no sense. Well, you get the idea. No, n no, I don't. Hey, can we get moving here? Time's a bit of a factor here. Never mind, now oh, I see what you mean. Luca rams forward and jams the TV through the door, knocking Lee to the ground. The scene cuts back to Lee staring at the TV, transfixed by its curvy aesthetic. It cuts back between the TV and his eyes. The moment is broken when JJ speaks up. So, hey, can we... turn it on? What? Can we turn it on? You know? See how it works? Yeah, come on, let's have a go. No, I, I mean... no. I bet you guys are hungry, right? I mean, we can order pizza. No! I, I mean... you guys worked so hard. How about I treat you to dinner at Panda Express? Luca and JJ look at each other. Seriously? Dude, just admit it. You want some me time with your TV because you're in love with it. I'm not in love with my TV, dick. Fine, just enamored. Better? Uh, yeah, that works. All right, well, if you need us, we'll be at... Where are we going? Come on, JJ, I'll treat you to Duckworths. Definitely don't want to come between the two, right? As they leave, Lee walks over to the TV and admires the curves. He strokes it and leans forward. Hey, baby. You and I are going to do it all night. He looks around. That totally didn't sound weird at all. He notices a small piece of paper and opens it. Please be advised. There is the potential for this device to steal your soul. Hey man, I bet those two put it there just to mess with me. What well, nice try, guys. Can steal my soul. What is this? The Middle Ages? For God's sakes, this is the 21st century. He turns towards the TV and clears his throat. Voice activation, power, and remote control. Ha! Xenos power on. He waits, but nothing happens. 
Xenos. Uh, Power on. Nothing happens. He looks at the TV. No power button or anything? The f I said Xenos. Power the f on and it- Oh, wait, here is the power button. Well, he finally finds the button and presses it. There's a great yellow blast and a sucking sound. And all of a sudden, Lee finds himself in a white room and a glass wall. It's dark glass, but he sees the living room outside. As the situation sinks in, he soon realizes his predicament. God damn it! The scene cuts to the TV and Lee's screams emanate from it. The scene fades in and out, and Luke and Jeju walk in talking. And that is why, even if we believe in a multiverse, there cannot be multiple versions of God. You see, God is like the person who throws a rock into a pond and the various ripples are different branches of reality. Uh-huh. Which means what? It means there is one cause of reality, but elements within the original reality that can lead to different timelines. Uh-huh. Are you, like, high or something? No! We've been through this, JJ. I am not high. Well, at least not at this moment. The scene cuts to Lee sitting in the white room where he hears the two talking. He looks up and runs over to the glass wall. God almighty, there he goes again. All about God and the multiverse. You realize that talking about that shit doesn't actually make you sound smart. He bangs on the wall. Hey! Hey! Guys, can you hear me? Hey! Back in the living room, JJ looks around and stops. You hear something? N no I could have sworn I heard something. Listen. They can hear bang and the two turn towards the TV. Is that... Does that... Can it be Lee? Inside the TV? Ridiculous. Right, in 10 seconds you go, it wasn't crazy to talk about parallel universes. Uh, you may have a point. I bet that is a conduit into alternate realities. Dude, you gotta let that go. You're starting to worry me. <laughs> you and my ex. Lee. Is that you? Yeah, get me out of here! How'd you even get in there? Hey, JJ, check this out. He hands him the piece of paper Lee dropped. It can suck your soul? That is medieval. Hey, Lee, are you in an alternate universe? No, idiot! I'm in a white room! So the universe must be powered by quasars. I'm in a motherfucking white room. There's nothing metaphorical about that. I am literally sitting in a white room with you jackasses staring at me. Now get me out! Wow. Ever the dick. Alright. Um... What did you do to get in there? I said Zenos power on. So say Zenos power off. I've been saying that for the past five minutes since you left. W we were gone for an hour. What?! Never mind that. Um... Zenos. Release prisoner. The two watches, nothing happens. Xenos, don't release the prisoner? What was that? Reverse psychology. It's a TV from Korea. How can it possibly be susceptible to reverse psychology? Alright, maybe we can find a button or... Mm, nope, there's no button. No, there is. Oh, I see it. I see it. Can we call tech support? On it. Dude, please get me out of this place. Lee, just hang on. Hey, what happens when you touch the panels? Hang on, no. Ah! What happened? I got electrocuted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Is that all you can say? Oh. Bad news. What? The company was bought out by another company and they stopped manufacturing that model eight months ago. And? Oh, that's it. Apparently so many people got sucked into the TV that they had to do a recall. Well, how did they get the people out? Ooh, that part they didn't say. Oh, god damn it, all the hell. Get me out of this shithole! Yeah, that's a doozy. He leans against the TV, and it leans over and falls to the floor. The two look at one another and lift the TV, but find it remarkably intact. They look at it and put it back on the on the stand. Lee? You okay? 
There's a moment of silence, but, but there's a blood curdling ah! scream, and the TV begins to shake as the two take their cue and run out of the apartment. And that's going to do it for today's episode. If you enjoy the episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. Help the channel grow and stay up to date for the latest episodes that come out every Monday. And as always, I appreciate you tuning in and watching, and I'll catch you next week. Bye.